In this video we'll be building a six foot round oak table with some uh, pretty cool detail on the legs. So let's get started. So in building this table I'm using some uh, rough sawn oak we bought from a local mill. So uh, this is all going to have to be milled, go through the joiner and the planer. Right now I'm getting it cut to, uh, to rough length. And since it's a circle, I've uh, done some figuring ahead of time. And, uh, you know, all these boards are, are different sizes based on where they're going to end up on the top. Now we're going to start getting them flat on the joiner. I'm going to run one face through there until, uh, until it is flat. And then I'll reference that face on the fence and uh, get one edge of the board 90 to that face and uh, flat and straight. Now I'm going to move over to the planer and uh, have that flat face down on the bed and drop some boards there. Um, so we'll have that face flat on the bed and the planer's cutting from the top side. So as that board comes through there um, with that flat face referencing the uh, table, the blade above is, uh, is making the other face flat and perpendicular to... Uh, to the flat side that we made on the joiner. So once we get done with the planer, which we'll have to run through it several times, and uh, you know the first time or two through, you're, you'll barely be kissed. Well, how I do it anyway, I barely uh, barely kiss the boards until I uh, you know get get any high spots taken out. Uh, but then you'll get uh, you'll get the boards completely flat, and that's uh, that's three sides flat. And then we'll run through the table saw to get that fourth side flat and uh, straight and even with, uh, with the other side. And that's why we're running it through the table saw. You can't put that side through the joiner because even though you'll get a, a straight flat 90 degree edge, um, it won't necessarily be uh, perpendicular or, or straight to the other side. So you've got to reference the side that you've gotten flat to the fence on your table saw. And, uh, and in that way you'll get uh, two sides that are perpendicular to each other. So now I'm laying out my boards for the top to uh, first of all make sure that they're wide enough once I got them all done. And uh, just getting my circle laid out here. So after I get these all set in place I'm gonna measure and find the center of the top and then I'll use a little tool to uh, draw my six foot circle and uh, really I'm just double checking myself here to make sure my previous measurements worked out right and uh, none of those boards are too short and obviously I'm doing that for a reason because you know, that's happened to me in the past where I've I've missed misfigured and uh, had a board too short so now I have to double check all that before I bother gluing them up so you see here I'm, I'm putting little blocks of wood in the middle of those clamps and uh, that's because this oak is heavy and uh, when you're doing a six foot top like this six foot wide you're using long clamps like that they will tend to bow down in the middle if you don't have something supporting them So before I start, I'm getting the rest of my clamps laid out and, and ready. And now we're going to start spreading some glue. 
it's always nice to have help in this uh, stage, especially when you're doing a, a six foot wide top like this. It's nice to have an extra set of hands. So we can get that glue spread, get the boards all set down in place before it starts, uh, you know, drying up on us. And if you remember, I drew that circle on uh, on the top side of these boards. So now we're using those lines to line these boards up just to make sure they're in the right place. And if you've seen my previous videos or any of our previous videos, you've seen us use these little six inch clamps to uh, to help hold these boards in place while we while we clamp it up. Not completely necessary, but uh, but it helps. It it just makes it a little easier for us. Then we'll go through with that dead blow hammer and uh, and knock a few boards down and get them evened out. Get the pipe clamps tightened up and then uh, those small clamps will come back off there. Yeah, this is the next day the clamps are off and while I had them in the clamps I uh I poured some epoxy filled some uh filled some knot holes filled some cracks and this is the bottom side of the top so uh that that red you see on there is red tape where I had uh taped over some you know the bottom side of some knot holes where the where the epoxy came through <clears throat> and uh right now I'm uh I'm clearing some of those those spots that came through with that epoxy because uh, I'm you know I'm getting ready to go round and round with that router and uh, it hits those bumps and it will mess up my cut so uh, I'm just doing a little test spin here to make sure there's no no high spots that are going to mess up my cut and any high spots I do have I'm fixing with that sander before I start actually cutting. So right there, I was setting my depth gauge, and uh, you know, I'll I'll go around many times. I'll uh, you know go around, make a shallow cut, and then uh, lower the spot on my depth gauge, do another cut, and uh, just keep going around until I'm until I'm through. I would rather take. I have actually burned a router up back when I you know had first started cutting and I was this is exactly what I was doing and uh, I just took too deep of a cut and it was an expensive router it was uh it was upsetting but uh yeah I burned that sucker up uh, just just taking too deep of a cut so I would rather cut shallow and uh and go around a couple extra times uh instead of burning my router up Now this, you know, obviously we've got four legs here, and uh, off off camera, I uh, I got my first leg made, and uh, you know this table I'm building is a display for the store. This is not for one of our customers, so uh, you know I'm just kind of experimenting with this table, doing some new things, uh, some you know different things. You know, most of this stuff I have done before, but uh, not quite in this you know put put it together like this. So. Uh, I made a, a test leg first uh, to see if I liked it, see if I liked the looks of it, showed it to my wife, see what she thought of it, and uh, she approved, so uh, I used that test leg to uh, to set up for, uh, you know, for the other three legs. So uh, that one you see is done as a test leg that, uh, that I made, and, uh, you know, I used it to, as a reference to, uh, to set up the table saw to, to make those two fine cuts and then I used it as a reference to set up the router here to make these cuts. You can see me setting it up right there. That little fence on that little router uh, can be very handy for you know things like this. And that router doesn't come, at least the, when I bought it, it didn't come with that fence. That's something I had to, uh, to buy separately. Now this is something I wish I would have done a little bit later on, and I'll show you why. 
but uh, so I'm I'm tracing out that that cut and uh, I'm gonna do a big part of it on the table saw you see I've got that stop block there and uh, pushing the leg up through to that point and then I'll finish it off that round the round portion and I'm cutting outside the the, the line on the bandsaw and then I'll come back with a router and uh, and clean that up and, and you'll see me do that in a minute on the, on the router table which is just on my table saw so I'm gonna use some double-sided tape here and uh, the, the finished leg that I made earlier I'm gonna stick that to uh, to my other one and you notice I've got those standing up on my table when I stick them together and that way uh, that back side is referenced and they're both you know at the same spot whenever I stick them together and then I'm just using a straight uh, straight router bit here to uh, to follow that uh, that top leg and it's uh, making the bottom leg match it so now we're uh, I'm getting I'm to the aprons I'm cutting the aprons to uh, to width and I'm figuring out where I want to put my legs I'd like to have my legs out as far as possible but I also want them in far enough to where they're not in the way when uh, when you're sitting at the table so uh, that's what I'm that's what I'm doing right there is figuring out where that spot is now I'm looking at the width of these right now I'm dividing that in half and uh, because I'm getting ready to cut some half laps here. And I thought I would use my leg as a reference, but, uh, you know, it's that's not going to work because the uh, the dado stack... Right now I've got... Let me back up a minute. The, uh, the fence is set for one side of my cut, and then I thought I would stick my leg in there and uh, be able to push that over, and, uh, you know, that would make the... Uh, make it line up for the other side, the other cut, but... Uh, you know, the, the fence is, anyway, that didn't work with the dado stack, so I had to cut a block to use instead of my leg, which is what you see me doing there. I'm using that block to reference for one side, and then I'm pushing it up against the fence to reference for the other side, and then I'm hogging out the middle. So there's my block, cut the one side, go to the fence, cut the other side. So now I'm just laying out, uh, you know, I've already got the half lap in the apron. And now I'm laying out where that half lap needs to go in the leg. And uh, this is why I was saying earlier I wish I had waited to uh, to make those cuts on the on the legs, the, the curve. Um, this half lap would have been a little easier if I had done that while it was still a, a you know, a, a good rectangular piece of wood. So now I'm having to use a... Uh, a spacer in there so I can try to hold it flat so I get a good you know 90 cut on this half lap and it ends up working out but it uh, just would have been a little easier if I had done this and then made those made those cuts on the leg it's a little tight fit but uh, and I, and I do go through and, uh, and clean those up a little bit later and uh, get them to fit in there a little nicer. That, uh, that was a little tight, but it, uh, it went in.
All right, so now on the end of my apron, I'm going to cut that corner off just so it doesn't get into your knee. Because I, I like to have it sticking out just as far as I can to support that top. Um, so I'm just going to cut that corner off. So even though it's sticking out there a ways, it's not in the way. And now I'm cutting a half lap in the middle so I can put the two uh, aprons together and they can cross. I'll go ahead and get this glued up and then, uh, well, you'll see in a minute what I start working on next. So right now I'm just dry fitting the legs and I'm doing that because uh, if you noticed in the pictures before there's going to be uh, uh, oh, some braces that go across the bottom. That's that leg that's a really tight fit. And I end up shaving that just a little bit before I actually glue it up so it, uh, it goes in there a little better. So I'm making sure they're square here and they are. And now I'm going to measure between the legs for that brace that goes across the bottom. That way there's no guesswork involved. I uh, I know what size that space is. It's worth taking the time to put it together and uh, and measure that. So this is that board that uh, that's going to cross there between the legs. And uh, it's going to go into that leg with a mortise and tenon joint. And uh, I'm cutting a tenon here. We usually do three quarter inch tenons. And I think these boards were an inch and a half. So we're taking what three eighths off uh, off each side, off each face. Now I'm going to cut the mortises with the mortiser, and uh, obviously that needs to be centered. It's, if that's off a little bit, your your board's going to you know be proud on one side. And if you're off just a hair, I mean, you can sand that in, and uh, and nobody's ever going to see that. But uh, obviously, you want to try and get it as centered as possible. So we get glue on that tenon, and... Uh, Get the leg stuck on there. And these these legs, like I was saying before, you know, I uh, I played with them a little bit to get them to fit in each joint because uh, even though I had uh, had the setup block and uh, and everything, uh, each one of those came out just you know just a hair different. So I've got the legs matched up to a specific joint to you know for the top for the aprons on the top. Um, so I've got them all numbered and I uh, wanted to make sure I got them in the right place. Now this clamp I wanted to fit between that bottom clamp and that, uh, and that brace and it wouldn't, wouldn't fit in there. So I had to go back and get another clamp that, uh, that didn't have, the, there's a little spring on the bottom that keeps, that keeps the uh, part of your clamp that slides up and down on the, uh, Oh, on the pipe. <clears throat> I had to go back and get one of my clamps that was missing that spring so I could pop that bottom off. And uh, I slid it through there and then put it back on. So this was fun, getting all four of these matched up at the same time.
So assembling the base is all done. I mean, there's still some uh, still some work in there, just some sanding and uh, and router work. But uh, but building that thing is done. Now I'm gonna get the top flat, and then this is the bottom side of the top. Uh, I like to use this big belt sander to uh, to flatten everything out, and and any uh, edges of boards that aren't quite matching up, you know, we'll clean up with this this big flat sander. And this is the next day, so I'm getting the base out of clamps. And we'll get that router work and sanding done on it. So this isn't any finished sanding. I'm uh, I'm just trying to uh, get everything matched up. Any glue squeeze out out of the way, because uh, I'm going to be coming through here with a router, and uh, you know referencing the edges. And any any bumps I run across is gonna is gonna mess up my routing. So I'm putting a, a large round over on the entire base. And as you can see there, I stopped and, and cleaned something else up I missed with the sander just now. So after I get done with this, then I'll uh, you know come back with the sander and do my finished sanding. And really for me, this is not something that I could do on a router table ahead of time before I put it together because uh, there's a lot of joints here that I want to, uh, that I need to route after it's assembled. And I guess I could uh, do all the routing up to that joint, uh, you know, on a table before beforehand, but uh, it just makes more sense to me to do it all at once after I've got it together. I've got dust all over me. Now these are some braces that are going to go between the legs. And uh, I've already cut 45s on them. I just took these boards and you know set them on top. And, uh, and, and drew some lines where I wanted to make those 45 cuts. And I'm just going to put those in with some wood glue and, uh, and pocket screws. These are really just, you know, just some extra support. I'm having a hard time getting uh, getting my clamp to to work here to hold it in place, so I'm putting a little call back here, and uh, for some reason my double sided tape wasn't helping me out any any either. It wouldn't wouldn't grab hold, so I just wrapped it up with some blue tape there. And when you're drilling like this, especially when you're putting a screw in at an angle like this, your your board will tend to walk on you. So uh, I'm having a brain fart here playing with this, trying to figure out how I'm going to clean. And, you know, I've done this a hundred times, but it uh, seems like every time I do it, I have to figure it out again. I just can't keep it. But uh, I finally get it figured out. You'll see here I clamp that uh, block there and then bring that other clamp over to hold to to put pressure against it and hold it in place. And that way my board's not walking on me while I'm putting those screws in at an angle like that. You know, the router's a great way to uh, to cut a circle, but uh, it does leave 
and maybe if you had a nicer router bit it, it would be cleaner i don't know but uh you know the, the router bit i use I, it does leave a bit of a mess on the uh, on the edge so i spent a little bit of time sanding that and uh, we put a chamfer on the top and bottom edge of this tabletop and it came out looking really sharp on this table large chamfer so this table's done I didn't uh, didn't film uh, staining it and we didn't film uh, uh, putting finish on it but it's uh, got uh, weathered oak minwax stain on it and then uh, a satin finish from Vermont natural coatings and uh, came out looking really nice we, we uh, sprayed the uh, the clear coat on and uh, I hope you like this video maybe you learned something if you have any questions feel free to uh, put those in the comment below and I uh, would love for you to, to like this uh, video and uh, subscribe to our channel thanks